Did you know that you can camp in national forests absolutely free? There's a bunch of public lands that you can camp for free. You don't have to stay in the campgrounds with everybody else. If you're craving solitude and peace and quiet and you have a little bit of explorer in you and you just want to go see what's out there, see what you can find, you can do that in the national forest absolutely free as long as you follow a few simple rules. My name is Carolyn. I live in an RV and I share my life. I've been sharing my life for the past five and a half years, how to live on the road in an RV and uh, just experience the best of what the country has to offer. So a few simple rules that I have learned along the way that I'm gonna share with you so that you can just be free. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to find your own. So what does dispersed camping mean? Or what do you mean, or, you know, you're like, what do you mean when you say boondocking? I keep hearing boondocking. So dispersed camping is the technical term, the legal term that they use on the websites for going out in the forest and camping away from any developed area, a campsite, a picnic area, even a trailhead. So you can just go down a dirt road, find a place to camp, and you can stay there as long as you follow some rules. So that's what dispersed camping is. And most public lands, whether they're national forests, whether they're Bureau of Land Management, or even state forests, different conservation areas and wildlife management areas, I have boondocked, stayed for free in public lands all across the country. And they all have different Different rules. So the first thing that I'm going to advise is before you stay on any public land in any national forest, either check with the district office, go online to look at their specific rules, or download a motor vehicle usage map or MVUM so that you make sure you are following the specific rules literally every national forest has their own rules sometimes even the different districts within a national forest have different rules what i'm going to talk to you about today are some general rules that i have seen apply to the most places that i have camped so i'm going to speak in generalities but again if you want to make sure you're following the rules and not breaking the law, it's best to check with the district and the forest that you're staying in. All right, so one rule that's pretty consistent throughout all the public lands is that you can't camp within a mile. It's usually a mile of any developed area. That's a developed campground, that's a picnic area, that's a day use area, and that's a trailhead. Now I'm going to say usually because sometimes you can camp at a trailhead, but again, it's best to double check. It's best to err on the side of caution, especially if you're risk averse. <laughs> All right. But Jen, or if you just want to make sure you're following the rules. So just, you need to stay away from any developed areas. Number two, you are supposed to stay on any existing roads and make sure you know what a road is and what a road technically is in the national forest that you're in. Just because you see something that looks like a road doesn't necessarily mean it's a it's a, an official road that you're allowed to drive on. Sometimes you see signs restricted, no motor vehicles allowed. Sometimes you don't. Just because you don't see a sign doesn't mean you can drive on that road. Again, this is why it's really important to check with the office or download uh, an MVUM, motor vehicle use map, okay? But generally, you know, some roads are pretty obvious. Generally, you're supposed to stay on the legal roads, on the roads designated for motor vehicle use. The, the third thing that is pretty consistent throughout all forests is you must camp 100 feet from water. Okay, never camp right on top of a water source unless they, I guess, unless you see a, a site there already. There are many rivers that I have been on, many lakes where there are existing sites. And oftentimes in the national forest, they'll say, to only camp in existing sites with fire rings and everything. So there's, you don't want to go out someplace that has never been camped in before and camp right on top of the water. All right. And even if you can avoid it, even if it is an existing site and it's not a highly trafficked area, it's always best to avoid a water source because you're going to contaminate it no matter what. I mean, it, it's probably not only are you going to contaminate the water source, going in it with bug spray on or 
lotion on or, or throwing your dishwater out your door within a hundred feet, you're going to contaminate that water source. You also might be trampling on delicate vegetation that only grows around that water source. So it's really important to just try to be aware of your surroundings, understand that there's some very sensitive vegetation and animal life and plant life out here and just be conscious of where you're treading to minimally impact the area that you're going to okay now this is one of the things that i see very by forest the most but in general they say that if you're going to go out and travel on a legal road an authorized road where vehicles are allowed they want you to camp within a hundred feet of that road okay sometimes it's 50 feet they want you to stay within 50 feet of that road sometimes it's 100 feet i think i may have seen 150 feet somewhere but the goal is they they don't want you going far out driving far out you know messing with the vegetation messing with the animals they just want you to stay within a contained area okay so again it's really important for the national forest that you're in if you're not going to be on something that looks like it's traveled all the time depending on the size of vehicle that's easier to do than it is in mine you definitely want to make sure that you're following that rule that you're within a certain footage of a road. Conversely, I have seen national forests where they say you can't camp within 300 feet of a road, but that's usually a developed road. It's not a national forest road. Some national forests go through pretty populated areas. They're butting right up against national treasures or national parks, and they don't want you camped within uh, 300 feet of civilization or other houses sometimes in public lands there's private property mixed in so sometimes usually like I said a very developed road or area they don't want you within a certain footage of that road but generally if you're out on a national forest road and it's marked with that post that brown post with the letters and numbers on it that's generally a national forest road they're often marked not always but often marked and generally the rule is one of those roads you must stay within a hundred feet so that you're not trampling on the forest and ruining the ecosystem okay the other rule is to avoid meadows again don't drive on anything that looks sensitive anything that looks pristine <laughs> you know don't go out there ruining it and they say they don't want you driving and camping in meadows or any big open space because they don't want it they don't want you to ruin the experience for other people who might be coming to enjoy nature there's nothing worse than taking a hike out to a meadow because you want to enjoy the wildlife at the meadow and see a big camp in the middle of that meadow not only is it an I soar and it takes away from the experience of other people who want to enjoy that public land it hurts the environment it hurts what we all come out here for right all right and number two the that was kind of a number one of where you can boon down but the second thing is our fires fires are usually allowed in most national forests without a permit Again, you need to check. I know a lot of national forests, I think in California, require an annual permit. It's free. They just want you to get a permit so that they can keep track. I have a feeling with conditions getting drier and drier and wildfires getting more and more prevalent, endangering our public lands that might become more common most of the time though you don't need a permit but you do need to know the fire restrictions within the forest that you're in again as things get drier they're going to be putting bans on fires earlier and earlier in the season in my travels this year i've seen bans on fires in entire states i think it was south dakota no fires were allowed in any um, national forest land at all so it's really important to check on that before you have a fire always try to have a fire in an existing fire ring if there is one okay and just be safe have a shovel have water if you need to put it out you know don't don't have a fire on a windy day and if it's super dry just be smart if you're gonna have a fire number three what are the limits 
how long can I stay in a camp in a national forest? I have seen everything from four days to 16 days. And the next question is, okay, well, when can I come back? I've seen everything from you can come back in 10 days to 365 days. I think it was Ocala National Forest, four days, and you can't come back for a year. It depends, again, on how populated the area is, how much traffic that area sees. You know, a lot of these rules are made because people didn't follow the rules they had that to begin with. So it's important if you're, if you're going to be staying for anything longer than two weeks, generally it's two weeks. Uh, I just recently saw something that was 16 days. I think the forest I'm in actually might be 16 days. But generally it's two weeks, generally it's 14 days, and then you have to move, and then generally you can't come back for 30 days. That's a big generalization, it varies. And in California, when I first started out, I remember seeing that you didn't even have to leave the National Forest, you just had to move to another district. So if you don't want to move around a lot, if you're like, I want to spend the summer in one area, know the national forests in that area, what the limits are, can I spend two weeks here and then move 30 miles away to another part of the forest and then come back. So just check with the forest that you're going to be in to double check and see what the rules are for that forest. But again, in general, I have seen you can stay in a national forest up to 14 days and then you have to move uh, 10 to 30 days you can come back is pretty much what I've seen, okay? But it's always best to check. And finally, the final and in my opinion one of the most important rules about dispersed camping or boondocking for free in national forests and all public lands is leave no trace. We all come out here because we want to enjoy nature. Nobody comes out here because they want to see somebody else's poop and toilet paper on the ground. Nobody comes out here because they want to see somebody else's garbage. Nobody comes out here because they want to see somebody else's pretty rock garden. We come out here because we want to commune with nature, we want to be close to nature, and this is the closest we can get in the United States for the most part without, and, and trying to not feel humans' impact. And it's getting harder and harder and harder to do that. So no matter where you go, practice the most stringent leave no trace principles you can. Take your garbage with you. Oh, that's another thing. Dispersed camping means no services. There are no toilets. There's no garbage service. There's no water. That's what dispersed camping is. So you need to bring all that with you and you need to take it all out with you. Don't throw your dishwater out. You know, I mean, a little bit if you're going to disperse it, but really you shouldn't. You should really take everything with you that you come in with. If you um, are burying your poop. If you have to poop in the woods, go a hundred feet at least away from a water source, bury a hole six inches, and take your toilet paper with you. I've done it tons of times backpacking where I've actually had to carry it on my back for six, seven, eight days in a Ziploc bag. You can do it. <laughs> Putting it somewhere inside your van or RV in a couple Ziploc bags and take it to the next garbage that you find. Do not leave your toilet paper out here. I always hear, but it's biodegradable. Yeah, but how many people have to see it? Because an animal is going to dig it up. How many people have to see it before it biodegrades? I don't come out here to see your poopy toilet paper. Bear scat, yeah, but I don't want to see your poopy toilet paper or your pee toilet paper. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've gone into the forest and I've seen somebody else's toilet. That's disgusting. That's not why any of us come out here. So leave no trace, take your toilet paper with you. If you can, always, always settle in an existing camp. A turnout, you know, something like this, that's, you know, it's got gravel in it. It's definitely been well used a turnout that's been well used. Don't make new roads. 
Don't plow over trees and vegetation and mole holes and chipmunk holes. Try and whenever you can, and even in the desert, it's pretty uh, obvious what has been used before as a camp. Oftentimes there will be a fire ring there. Oftentimes you'll see tra uh, tire tracks or a clearing. So whenever possible, which should be almost all the time with the way things are now, and again, I guess it depends on your vehicle. If you have a four-wheel drive that can go really, really remote, you might be able to find something pristine, but I can't. So always try to stay in an existing campsite, you know, a primitive campsite, whenever you can. Something that looks like it's been used before. Don't go out and make your own. Leave No Trace also says, don't build trenches. Don't dig trenches. People in the desert will dig trenches for their tires. Those trenches will stay there for a million years. Don't dig anything. Don't do anything that you can't cover up you shouldn't do it anyway, but when you leave, at least try to cover it over and make it look like you were never there. That's our goal with Leave No Trace. When I leave, you won't even know I was here. That's pretty much how I live my life. I can't think of any situation where that's not true. Try to find a, a place that's been used already and don't do anything that's gonna affect the area after you're gone. Don't di dig trenches, don't build rock gardens, don't build rock paths. I can't tell you how many times I've seen rock paths. Uh, don't dr you know dig trenches to try to level out your vehicle. When you leave, no one should know you were there. Don't build new fire rings. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into a camp something that looks like it's been camped in before. There's a fire ring there, and there's a fire ring there, and there's a fire ring there. Really? At the very least, if it's not convenient for you to have your fire over there for whatever reason, and you feel you need to have it here, at the very re least, if you have to rebuild it, and I, you know what, I, I have fires without a fire ring. If, I, I don't understand, I only have little fires when I have them, but I don't need a fire ring. I can just start a fire on the ground without a fire ring. I don't understand if it's clear, there's no vegetation around it. Why do you really even need a fire ring? It's really, in my opinion, de decorative. I don't know, you guys can challenge me. Maybe there's a reason for it, but it doesn't really seem to protect much. A few rocks, really. But if you do need to build a new fire ring, disperse it before you leave, throw the rocks, Cover it up, your burn. Don't leave it. There's, I don't understand how many times I've gone into a campsite and there's literally like three or four campfire rings. Try to use the one that's there. If you have to build a new one, disperse the rocks before you leave. When you leave, you wanna make it look like you were never there. Camp 100 feet from water. Don't throw anything out. Don't throw your dishwater out. It's, it's, whenever you introduce even all natural stuff, Dr. Bronner's or whatever, you're still introducing something foreign into an environment that's not used to it. Peppermint doesn't grow wild here. You throw out peppermint something out here, you're introducing something to this ecosystem that is not uh, native to this ecosystem and we start ruining what we love so much about the different places that we go, the diversity in the natural places that we go when we start introducing non-native things. So it's best, like I said, it's best, no matter what you bring, it's best to take it with you. I have a gray tank, so I don't have to throw anything out. Not everybody has a gray tank. I understand that, but uh, yeah, just do your best. What the goal is to preserve this for everybody. Everybody wants to come out here and experience nature, not humans impact on nature. And unfortunately it's getting harder and harder to do that. That's why I backpack. Um, that's why I used to backpack, you know, so that I could go out and go far away from where vehicles could go to try to experience some pristine, but even that's getting more and more difficult. Remember my whole PCT hike, Pacific Crest Trail and all through Oregon. It didn't feel remote. It felt like a highway. It's getting harder and harder to get away and really just enjoy nature without the impact of humans. But do what you can. Leave no trace. Take everything with you. When you leave, there should be no sign you were there. So that's the biggest thing. Uh, that's the biggest rule, in my opinion. Just act like, leave it like you want to see it when you get here. You know, this has to last for future generations. And the less we take care of it, the more we abuse it, 
the more we impose ourselves on the environment, the less there's gonna be for future generations, the less there's gonna be for everybody who comes and visits here. We are visitors in this forest. There's a whole ecosystem of animals and plants and trees and algae and mold that lives here all the time. Even when I go home, it's still gonna to continue to live here. But what I do for the two weeks that I'm here can have lethal impact on this environment. So remember that. We come out to the forest to enjoy the forest. So let's just leave the forest to thrive in our absence. Those are the rules and tips for free dispersed camping and boondocking in national forests. And again, I can't recommend enough if you want to really make sure you're following the rules, just it's a quick check. All you have to do is search dispersed camping for whatever national forest you're going into. Just to, a quick look at the rules. How long can I stay? How far from a road do I need to be? If you want to be super extra quick careful, download the motor vehicle use map so that you know you're absolutely on a legal road because uh, at, at Bob Wells has stories about that. that Rangers have come by and said, you're not allowed to be on this road. This is a, a closed road to motor vehicles. And the person pulled out the MVUM and said, nope, not according to the map. I'm allowed to be here. The ranger looked at the map and he was like, you're right. And it prevented that person from getting a ticket. So that's a story I heard secondhand. It's never been my experience. I have never had any problems. I, just, I can't even remember the last time I saw a ranger. I, you know, rangers don't come up. I, you know me, I try to go as remote as I can. I don't camp around other people. I respect the rules. I don't overstay my welcome. And I, I've never had any, any, I can't even remember the last time I had an interaction with a ranger when I was boondocking. They might drive by and wave. Oh, Colorado last year. I met a ranger last year. She drove into camp, said hi, was just kind of looking around and making sure everything was uh, going to be calm and safe for the 4th of July. And she saw me and we chatted and that was it. So, all right, go out there, have fun, respect, respect what we love so much so that it's there the next time you want to go there and it's there the next time future generations want to go there. Hope you found that helpful. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. For more fun, adventure, real life, authentic living, tips, tricks, everything under the sun. I'm a real mishmash. <laughs> be sure to subscribe below. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. Bye. Happy boondocking.